thank you for all of you that are live streaming in as well. It's quite exciting um, to have Lois with us this afternoon. I feel doubly excited, I will be honest with you. Um, Lois first interacted with us when we celebrated the Jewish New Year in September. At Eagle Lodge, we had our honey and apples, and Pip shared today that she put it on social media, and Lois very kindly liked our post. Now, from the connected with Lois, she did our February show far, and she's here today. Give Lois a wave for me. Okay, so you've all got your program. You'll all be aware of what Lois is speaking on, so I don't want to take any more of Lois's time. Now, there is an option for questions and answers at the end, um, so we'll have some interaction with Lois. I'd like to know, are you all sitting comfortably? You ready? Thank you, guys. Over to you. Welcome, Lois. We're so excited. Please start. It's wonderful. Uh, wonderful. I am glad to be with you by Zoom, even if not in person. I have to say, I'm a little. I would have in, enjoyed coming and being with you. I was um, in the UK uh, just about the same time in 2018, and I had a great time. And I got a huge kick out of just. We had a delightful time. Talking about cultural differences, you know, my world, I write about the Bible in its land and cultural setting about its Jewish context. And so when I go over to the UK, we see cultural differences. Like when I first arrived, my uh, uh, my host, uh, when I, we were chatting and I was telling him my ideas, everything I said, he'd say, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And I thought, wow, he thinks I'm a goddess. I'm so smart. But then I found out that brilliant is a thing that British people say a lot. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, in California um, a few years ago, there were teenagers who always said, awesome, awesome. Uh, and so, uh, so I've learned that brilliant kind of just means great, nice. That's good. Thanks. Uh, but it's just a little cultural difference, it's just a, a tiny thing. So, um, just just to give you a little sense of uh, how much I wish I could be with you and be chatting with you in person, and we could be interacting. But the Lord has given us Zoom this morning and or this afternoon as I'm with you, and so I want to talk to you about something that has been. One of my very favorite things that I've ever written about, I wrote about it some years ago in one of my first books, and not to be a salesperson, but here's my book, Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus. That was the first of three of, uh, of a series, uh, and you'll have to go look them up if you want to read more. If this intrigues you, I suggest you might want to read more. So, let me see. I have to get my slides working here. Okay. So, if you want to read more, you can come to my website, ourrabbijesus.com. I'm, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am a Christian. I'm a, I used to be a biology professor. I have a brain that just doesn't quit and so I uh, I have found it unendingly interesting to uh, learn about the cultural context and share it with others I'm not Jewish but I have found that there are just wonderful things that are truly brilliant that we can use to understand Jesus better and learn more about uh, how what the Bible was saying and to rejoice and know the Lord as he should be known. And this is one of the most important ones that I'm going to talk about today. Okay. I'm still getting used to my system here. Okay. So let's, we're going to talk a little bit about Jewish prayer. You, when you think back to the Gospels, you have, you know that Jesus was often going off by himself to pray early in the morning. Uh, he was a man of frequent prayer. And he often, he 
spoke about it. He told parables about it. People would ask him, how shall we pray? And so there's a lot that he has to say about prayer. And part of the reason why people are curious is because the Jewish people were around him were a very prayer-filled people. There were traditions that were already in place around him that you see coming up in the Gospels. And knowing more about them helps us understand the Gospels and Jesus' words. Okay? Uh, And so what I'm going to look at today is one type of prayer in particular. There, there are other ones. There are. There's one called the Amidah. It's 18 benedictions. They said it three times a day. I could go into, and of course we talk about the Lord's Prayer, but we're going to talk about one tiny little type of prayer that you would think would be insubstantial and non-consequential. But you're going to find out it can really change the way you think and your whole attitude towards God, okay? Um, Consider, even before we begin, what Paul said to people about prayer, what we ought to, uh, how we ought to live our lives. He says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. I mean, That's beautiful, wonderful. We're trying to do that. It seems almost kind of impossible, doesn't it? Praying continually, giving thanks in all circumstances. Sounds lovely, but honestly, it sounds just like pie in the sky almost. It's nice, but who actually prays continually? Well, I'll tell you, Jewish people (laughs) who, who take on a habit of blessing the Lord at all times. You, maybe some of you remember Fiddler on the Roof from long ago. It's been a few years since it's been out, but many of you might remember this is Tevya. And Tevya, he was a milkman and he, his donkey was lame and he had four daughters and he would have this kind of wonderful, easy, bantering relationship with God. This actually was, or and still is, uh, one strain of Judaism that actually there is kind of this easy back and forth, surprisingly, surprises evangelicals. Like, what? Can't believe that. Well, and then one thing that you might also remember from the movie is that uh, at one point, um, Modal gets a sewing machine, and um, and the and I'm not sure. I think it's Tevye. He says, "Is there a blessing for the sewing machine?" And the Rebbe says, "There's a blessing for everything." Uh, he says, "Is there a blessing for the czar?" And he says, "Yes. May the Lord bless the czar and keep him far away from here." <laughs> <laughs> and you're probably saying, what are they talking about? And if you are, you know, like me, when I first heard of this, I said, um, yeah, I assume that a blessing is a spell of holiness, that you wave your hand and you, and you confer on this mechanical pencil. I bless you and I make it. Holy, I have somehow cast a spell of holiness on it. That's not what a blessing is. I think actually Fiddler on the Roof doesn't quite understand that. (laughs) So, but I'm going to explain what we're really talking about. Okay. A blessing is actually a very short prayer, very tiny short prayer that blesses the Lord for a little tiny thing. Okay. You can hear, it's, you could say that it's a type of praise or thank you. It's an acknowledgement of something that God has done. Okay? And if you're probably saying, why are we blessing God? That seems strange. Doesn't God bless us? 
Well, actually, you find many times in the Bible you hear, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in, within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So, surprisingly, about Hebrew is there are actually several words that ironically have can be used in almost opposing ways. And God blesses us. He's the source of all blessings. And yet, a person can bless the Lord. That's just how that verb works. Uh, people think uh, it's called a, a bracha, or sometimes you hear they say bracha, kind of very fast bracha. Um, and they think that maybe it's because it's related to the word for berech is knee, and barach is the verb kneel. And it's like you're mentally kneeling down and praising God. You know, if, and you can say it works both ways. You know, if the queen wants to knight you, you would kneel down and she would knight you. <laughs> but if you wanted to, if you wanted to praise her, you would uh, come into her presence, maybe curtsy or kneel and say, oh, queen, wonderful. Thank you so much for this wonderful thing. And so in both ways, you're kneeling. You're mentally kneeling before the Lord. Okay. That's the idea behind it. And so let me show you how this works. Uh, there is a, I guess I should explain, there, there. This practice is still in place. Tevya was talking about it, and yet it dates back to before the first century. But there's been a, a there are little changes in how it's done now compared to before. Nowadays, every blessing starts out with a fairly long phrase. It's "Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the Universe." Back. A long time ago, well, um, in Hebrew, you say, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu, Melech Haolam. Okay? Uh, back in the first century, probably in the oldest form, it was simply, Blessed is he who, and then, uh, and it's very indirect and kind of a passive voice, is that you're just mentioning God. Uh, probably a little later and maybe in the first century, not exactly sure. It might have been, blessed are you, O Lord. And then it was probably after the time of Christ that uh, the, they added this lengthened version where you're actually always invoking that this, my, our God, is the king of the universe. And so they've uh, lengthened it. And if you have been speaking it for a while, you get good at saying that little phrase, that long phrase. But uh, in Jesus' time, probably the shorter form. Okay, let me just show you uh, where we actually find these even in the New Testament. Actually, the longer I study the New Testament, the more places I notice things that I'm guessing probably relating to the blessings. Okay. But in the Gospels, there is uh, you know, more than one place where they sit down to eat. And I believe this is at the feeding of the 5,000. Um, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Oh, oh that's not at the feeding of 5,000. That is at the, the Last Supper. But, the, but you notice that it says, and blessed. But the word it is not there, right? Um, uh, and it's actually not there in the Greek either. And it sounds a little odd to us because we, you know, if you're thinking that it's a spell of holiness, you would expect that he would bless it, the bread. He's not. He's blessing the Lord for the bread. And so you bless. That's just the shorthand. And so we understand that that's what he's doing there right okay and and you're it's very short everybody knows what he said because they lived in his culture but of course we need to ask what was he actually saying 
uh, if you had Shabbat last night, you might have said the very words, Blessed are you, O Lord or God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Okay. And so you're reminding yourself that God is ultimately the source of your nourishment. Um, you Notice he doesn't bless for the fish or well, at the Last Supper. He doesn't bless for the lamb. He just blesses for the bread, partly because lamb, bread, really is a, a word that means all nourishment. It's wider than that. When you bless for the bread, you're blessing for all of the food. Okay. If you were a, a disciple at the Last Supper, or maybe the day after the Last Supper, when Jesus was uh, a couple days later, when you found out that he had risen from the dead, you might reflect back to what you had prayed. Blessed is he who brings forth bread. Jesus said, my body is the bread, bread uh, uh, broken for you, and he comes forth from the ground. Hmm, just interesting meditation. Many of these are good for meditation and thinking a little bit deeper when you think of Jesus' words and what the prayers were that were going on around him. Okay. Okay. So what I just said, this um, blessing for the food, there's a blessing for wine. There are blessings for every different kind of food. And there are blessings that go all day long. Just a second. So this is what it's like to live a day full of prayer, to to praise God continually, to be to be thankfully thankful continuously. Okay. Imagine you're laying in bed and sleeping and you achieve consciousness. And the reason why you woke up is because the rooster was calling back in the first century. Well, there is a prayer that you say. It's blood is he who gives the rooster intelligence to tell the day from the night. (laughs) So you thank God for the rooster that woke you up. Um, Maybe a, a modern version would be blessed is he who makes clock radios Go off in the morning. You can write your own blessing for your iPad or whatever wakes you up in the morning. That's It's just the thing that made you conscious in the morning. Okay? Every little moment for the first waking up time is a time to remind yourself of God's presence. And so the very first thing after that might be that your eyes open. And so you say, blessed is he who gives sight to the blind. Isn't that rich? And you're, you're saying, wow, my eyes are working again today. Wow, praise God. <laughs> it's a miracle. My eyes are working again. They weren't last night when I closed them, but now they are. <laughs> you are reminding yourself of God's graciousness and the miracle of sight and how our eyes work. I used to teach human physiology. I know the biology, and it really is miraculous and gorgeous how God put everything together. And so to appreciate that every morning is wonderful. It's a good idea. Okay. Uh, As we're getting older, we... I can tell you, I myself um, struggle with shoulders that ache in the morning and I barely crawl out of the bed until I get my cup of coffee. And so there are actually prayers that thank God that God helped you get out of bed (laughs) in the morning. There is one that says, blessed is he who straightens those who are bowed down. That's actually coming from a psalm. 
uh, and it's actually the same thing Jesus said when, you remember the woman was um, who was bowed over for 18 years, she was afflicted by some spirit that kept her aff- bowed over, I, I assume, somewhat paralyzed. And Jesus, it was, I think, you know, on Shabbat, he healed her. Should she not be released from this prison? And so he straightened, Jesus straightened the woman who was bowed down. And the Lord does that for us every morning. (laughs) Um, You might want to look up Psalm 146 because it says the Lord, he gives sight to the blind and he straightens those who are bowed down. He releases those in prison. A lot of those things Jesus actually says about himself. Hint, hint, hint. Hmm, I wonder why. Fascinating, huh? So you're out of bed, you wander into the kitchen, and you get yourself an orange. And you plunge your thumbs into it, and the the juice just hits you in the nose, and ah, ooh, you brace yourself for that wonderful zingy scent. Hey, what a time to worship God. And you do that by saying, Blessed is he who gives a pleasant fragrance to fruits. <laughs> if you're out uh, walking and you smell a lovely flower, uh, you stop and smell the roses, but you don't just do it for yourself. You do it as a time to worship God and you say, blessed is he who gives a pleasant fragrance to flowers. Isn't that great? Um, you're, you're turning the most ordinary experience and the, a tiny pleasant sensation into an opportunity to worship God and to remind yourself of all the good things that he has done for you in life. Okay. Okay, so now you've had your orange, maybe a cup of coffee. You say, boy, I better put my clothes on. I'll stare at my closet. Oh, and if you're like me, oh, that one isn't washed, and I don't know what I want to wear, and I should go downtown and get some new clothes, right? Well, actually, when you get dressed, there's a blessing for that. And listen to this one. Blessed is he who clothes the naked. God clothes the naked. He himself is our ultimate, you know, he's the one who provides. And ultimately, clothes are not for fashion so much as they are to just modesty and warmth and covering yourself. It just, notice how these little prayers often challenge our modern attitudes. Um, I should explain here, if I can tell a story, this had a new sense when I just recently, um, I have been working together with a scholar from Uganda, and she was staying in uh, my area, and when she went home, we sent back uh, some clothes for teenagers and for babies because she and her family work together with youth and with uh, teenage girls. And um, this happened, What I'm, that picture that you see right up there happened only a, a week or so ago. I mean, it's very fresh, very recent for me is that uh, her daughter was um, driving along and, there, and she saw a young girl who was nine months pregnant and she was just running along the side of the road. She had run away, and she, this, and she's like, "Oh my!" She stops her car and she runs out and gets the. And she says, "Oh hey, how are you doing?" And and this young lady had not eaten. She was she hadn't eaten for days. She was hungry, and she's nine months pregnant, and she's run away from home. And so her daughter comes and says, "Hey." I've got some clothes I can share with you. <laughs> and they were the ones that we had sent back. And so only a couple days later, she gave birth. And so she sent a picture of her new little baby son. 
<laughs> no, it's a daughter. Sorry. Uh, the young woman, it, uh, the little girl does not have a name yet, but this picture is only a few days old. And it really gave me a new sense of what does it mean by blessed is he who clothes the naked. And you think of Jesus' words about I was naked and you clothed me. Boy, it sure does give you a different perspective on clothing and little things that you don't even think about. Praise God. Okay. So these are these little prayers, the prayers of blessing. Uh, You might be saying, I mean, if you're not thinking about people in Uganda, you might be thinking, you know, this might get kind of old if I say these little prayers for every little thing in the morning. And actually, you're supposed to do it a hundred times a day. (laughs) See if you can bless the Lord a hundred times a day. And you think, boy, I would think this would get kind of rote and maybe a little hollow and not very meaningful. Well, they had thought about that. And the answer is that you need to pray with kavanah. Kavana means direction, intention, devotion, concentration. You need to, to turn your thoughts towards the Lord and know that you are speaking to God. You can't be doing something else as you're blessing the Lord. You don't just rattle it off. You, know, you have to pause and say, wow, thank you, God. I, you, you, you direct your thinking towards God and not towards other things. Good idea, huh? Okay. We used to, well, when I was growing up, we would, we, in my house, we had a prayer that we all gr- prayed, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. I don't know if you guys had one that was just a repetitious one. And my mom used to have a little rule that uh, if you, a couple minutes later, if you said, did we pray? Because you forgot. <laughs> she said, okay, you have to say the prayer again because you weren't paying attention. You had no kavana. And that's... um so it's easy when you're saying something that is pre-programmed that it can become rote, but you need to push back and say, how can I continually remember that God has done this thing, and that I can praise God for it, okay? One way that um, this is underlined in Jewish living is that at the front of synagogues, in often in the there's this very large ornate ark, which is actually a big box where they hold all of the scrolls. You know, they open the doors and there's big scrolls inside. But across the top, often there used to be inscribed in Hebrew. It says, "Da lifne miata omed," and that means. Know before whom you stand. (laughs) It's kind of terrifying, isn't it? Know before whom you stand. That you're reading the words of God when you're reading out of the Torah. And that when we pray, we are speaking to the God of the universe. Wow. Right? It is to be aware of the presence of God. Something that often Christians will say, you know, maybe it was in a car accident and, you know, afterwards the ambulance came and then everybody prayed, you know, and you say, wow, we were really aware of the presence of God. And it's kind of a rare thing that happens when you're driven to prayer. And you know what? You can be invited to praying much more often and you can find that something that you know intellectually is true, yes, God is present here, is actually true. Because you're reminding yourself of a truth that is, uh, you're not making it up, you're not manipulating yourself, you're simply reminding yourself of something that is true in a way that if you keep doing it, it will start becoming much more obvious to you. I think of, 
one thing that reminds me of this is when you were a kid, um, you know how your mom used to say, or your mom, here I'll speak British, your mom used to, you, she, if in America, she, if you were handed a cookie, or, no, before she handed you the cookie, no, the biscuit, <laughs> she'd say, what do you say? And you say, please. And then after she gives you the biscuit, she says, what do you say? You say, thank you. That's a universal. And you think about it, you might say, well, we're just teaching etiquette, proper manners and etiquette for, you know, righteous, good living. But, you know, if you think a little harder about it, what you're really doing is you're trying to instill in your children a sense of appreciation of people around them. A biscuit does not just come out of nowhere. A cookie needs to be baked. And maybe mom spent half the day baking cookies and she's sharing one. Wow, that's nice. Thanks, mom. You are learning a sense of, I appreciate the person who did something for me. And when you say, please, you are reminding yourself, I'll have other things going on, and yet they are so nice as to do something, please. So both of those things are not just etiquette. They're actually teaching you an emotional attitude to a reality outside of yourself that is really there. Other people are there. They do nice things, and we appreciate them, right? Uh, and so appreciation is what you learn. And you notice that if you keep doing it, it becomes autom- autom- automated. Um, when somebody hands something to you, you say, thank you. But that's not rote. Your brain actually becomes appreciative. Wow, thanks. Thanks. I, what I find ironic is that um, people who are even atheists will write, Uh, books about uh, you really ought to have a thankfulness journal to be thankful and the universe for this. You know, uh, we need more thankful, but you know, to thank someone implies that there is a conscious person who made a decision to give you something. You thank people You don't think randomness. You don't think interstellar space. Interstellar space doesn't care. I'm trying, I'm not trying to be harsh uh, to people who don't know the Lord, but I have to say it doesn't make sense for a person to be thankful. There's no one to thank. And so, if anything, I would counsel people who say oh I just like thankfulness is consider why you're think and why you think it's so great to think could it be that there is someone you should be thanking right and so people have figured out boy it makes me happier the more I am thankful well you know you don't just do things for you you do things because God is present and it is right to give him thanks, right? So let me show you a few more wonderful, cool ways to give him thanks and praise. You can see that each one of these, it's like a, not just a, it's, it's a thank you, but it kind of goes beyond that. You notice that there is no actual me involved. You know, in our worship, services, everything is about me, me, I worship you, I, and these prayers are very focused on God instead, okay, and they're much more full of awe, and so, and there are many of them that are for other occasions in life, special lovely occasions that you can share with the Lord, okay, like, if you see lofty mountains or the sky in all its beauty. You say, blessed is he who made the creation. It's like, wow. 
you pause and you say, wow, thank you, Lord, for making this gorgeous creation. Isn't that great? And you take a moment to experience awe. There's actually a prayer for when you see a rainbow. It's about God who makes covenants. Reminding yourself of God's covenant with the creation. Uh, And, you know, when I used to do these, I'd say, I thank you for that rainbow. And then, but then you think about, I found it kind of absurd that like the God of the universe would respond back to me, Lois, I'm glad you like the rainbow. I made it so that you would like it. It seems a little almost odd that I'm patronizing God by patting him on the head by saying, I approve of your gorgeous rainbow. And so, in a way, when you take yourself out of the whole sentence and you say, oh, blessed is he who makes rainbows and declares covenants, all of the emotion and the wonder and the awe are placed on God. And it's not fine. It's good to involve yourself. But it also is good to just step back and stop thinking about yourself. And think about God. That's when wonder truly happens, is when you're thinking about God, not yourself. Okay? Sometimes there are scary kinds of events that happen. Things that might you imagine, especially for an ancient person, long time ago might inspire terror. But there's a blessing for that. On witnessing shooting stars, earthquakes, thunderclaps, storms, and lightning, you say, Blessed is he whose strength and might fill the world. So you're using this scary phenomenon to remind yourself that your God is even greater. Isn't that wonderful? Very wise. Notice each one of these just has great wisdom in it. Okay? Whenever you hear good news, like a baby is born, you say, Blessed is he who is good and gives good things. Isn't that great? (laughs) I love that. It's interesting I was really surprised when I heard one of the occasions that this is always used in. That's when it's raining outside. (laughs) I know that the UK gets lots of rain. Uh, Like uh, we do where I live in Michigan, we have clouds and rain for much of the year. And uh, we get tired of it after a while. Uh, And I used to find every occasion that I went outside and the weather was mildly unpleasant was a time for me to complain and remind myself that God doesn't love me, he didn't show up, and he sent bad weather just to show how little he likes me now. Right? Makes sense, right? (laughs) Well, in Israel where they live on the edge of a desert and about one out of four years, there is not not quite enough rain even to get the crops to grow. Um, Rain is an incredible blessing. And people, uh, they used to say, there are three things that God himself holds the keys to. One is the day of birth, the day of death, and the day of rain. Each one of those is, you can't, human beings, at least before cesarean sections, can't, couldn't control the day of birth. You just sat there waiting, waiting, you're nine months pregnant, I don't know, I don't know, just wait, wait, wait. And and when a parent, you know, is aging, and you know, they're waiting, and just, it's only God. Who knows? And the day of rain is a wonderful day because it's a day to thank God that he has sent rain, which is, despite our 
lack of enjoyment of rainy weather. It is absolutely necessary for life. And tell my Ugandan friends right now, um, because they're in East Africa right now, there is an incredible drought going on and people are dying. And so my precious friends, I'm um, praying for them daily. Um, oh, Lord, please send rain. If you want to know more, <laughs> I might be writing my email to my uh, my readers about my friends in Uganda. They are um, on my mind often right now. Okay. When you hear good weather, I just told you, that when I told you about good things, you say, blessed is he who gives good and does good things. He who is good and gives good things. There is a prayer for when tragedy happens. Because we don't just love God with the happy part of our hearts. We're supposed to love the Lord with all of our hearts, including the sad and grieving part of our hearts. And so the prayer that you say then is, Blessed is he who is the true judge. And that's a, at first you say, hmm, that seems harsh. Uh, Part of what's going on is the Hebrew behind judge is actually the words for judge overlap with the words for justice. And even vindication. Uh, The word here, judge, uh, Dan, is um, the same word that um, Rachel, I believe, she named one of her sons Dan because the Lord will vindicate me. And it's like it's like saying, oh, God, despite the horrible tragedy right here, I know that you will establish justice in the end, that you will vindicate those who need to be vindicated and you will finally be just. Um, Beautiful. Profound, really. Okay. This is a scene, I believe it was uh, early 70s after the Vietnam War. Uh, This man was a soldier who was a prisoner of war and his, for months and years, his family were praying for his return. And you can see the incredible joy. <laughs> and it's interesting. There is a prayer for when you haven't seen somebody in over a year. What, they, what you say is, blessed is he who revives the dead. Isn't that interesting? Um, remember... In the story of the prodigal son, uh, that when the son comes home, uh, his older brother's like, you didn't even give me a goat to celebrate with my friends. And his dad says, oh, but your brother was lost and now is found. He was dead, but now he lives. <laughs> and so, sounds like his dad is reminding himself about the Lord revived the dead. He was gone for over a year. And so, you remind yourself of the ultimate hope that just as God raised Christ from the dead, and he promises that we all will be raised from death in the end. And you do that when you have joy to see a family member you haven't seen in a long time. Isn't that good? Okay. I I just got a couple last ones. I think this is close to the end, but this one is one of my very favorites. When you have a, a point in life that you've been waiting for for a long time, you say this prayer. Blessed is he who has given us life and preserved us and brought us to this season. Um, I have been studying with some scholars in Israel for many years, and one of them had a son who, um, you know, like many young men nowadays, uh, struggled to get to find their way, and he was lonely and 
kind of uh, withdrawn, and we would pray all the time for the Lord to find a wife for him, you know, find new hope and a path to something good in life. And a oh, and he finally met this wonderful young woman who had joy and faith in Christ, and she loved the Lord. And uh, when they got married, everybody was so happy, <laughs> and I was there. And I came to the wedding. You know, they they did things that were kind of Jewish. They um, stomped on the glass, and it was delightful. And afterwards, these are all scholars who know a lot about the Jewish context of Christianity. And so we were all standing around, and um, the a friend of the mother came over and she gave her a big hug, and she said, Blessed is he who has given us life and preserved us and brought us through the season. <laughs> like, wow. Um, because this wasn't just a time to be happy. It was a time to praise God for how he had answered prayer. And they had a ready-made wonderful prayer for that time. You do this. Um, my same scholar friend, he used to do this whenever he would speak because he had actually traveled over the Atlantic to America to speak. And whenever you make a long journey, you you pray that because he preserved your life. Actually, there's another prayer um, If you that's very much, well, if you have experienced deliverance, like surviving a, a grave illness, or, believe it or not, giving birth to a child, which is a very dangerous thing. People die in childbirth. Women die in childbirth. Or if you've been released from prison or have uh, completed a dangerous journey across a desert or the sea or by air. I don't know if they've added that. There's a prayer that is uh, that you're supposed to gather 10 People, um, it's called a, a minyan. You have to st- say it before the congregation, and I believe this is still done today. Is that people come before their congregation after, uh, uh, and they say, "Blessed is he who do- who does good to the undeserving and has rendered every kindness to me." It's from Psalm 107. A lot of these prayers come from Psalms. And so they're very biblical and very wise. <laughs> Just really gorgeous. Okay. So. Thank you. So. Wow. I've given you. I'm feeling yes. exceptionally blessed. I don't know about any of you. Now, we have been very fortunate. We have a time of questions and answers. So you've got a time where you can interact uh, with Lois personally, would anybody is there anybody would like to say anything, or has anybody got a question, or anything that they'd like to raise with Lois while we're here? Wow, the room's gone quiet. I think we're all. Oh yes, would you? Do you want me to bring you the mic, or are you happy to come here, Jill? Is that okay if I take the mic out? Oh, come this way then. Sorry, that's me trying to ruin things again. I'm good at that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lois, for what you said. And what really spoke to me during that talk was where you said about when we pray a blessing to God for something, that we take ourselves out of it. And I think so often we could just, for an example, say, thank you, God, for doing this for me or giving me this. But we could just pray for what he's given us, but not bring ourselves into it. And that really, really, really spoke to me. Thank you. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Are yeah. you happy to come to the front? We've got some nods and some agreements. Come on through. Mm-hmm. The microphone's here. Thank you. Okay. Oh. Yeah. oh, right, that's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a bit strange to have back to somebody to ask them a question. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, I was saying so thank you very much. That's really wonderful. I was just wondering, is there like a... What, what sources did you have for finding out about these prayers? And is there like a big book I can go to and I can sort of read a thousand of these? It would really be good. A thousand of these. Okay. Well, 
Great. Thank you for, um, I did, I have a lovely handout that I can put, I will put a link on my website on a blog. I assume that this uh, presentation will be on YouTube at some point. Yes, I see you nodding. Yes. Um, I will, um, on the Our Rabbi Jesus website, if you find my blog, I will post the YouTube video and I will post a link that will have, uh, it's called a selection of blessings. That's a short um, thing, a, a short uh, resource that is easy and free. And if you want a little bit more, I wrote a, a nice chapter about it in my book called Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus. Uh, if you want to find more of them, you're going to have to do a little more research. <laughs> I believe you need to, um, I believe JewishEncyclopedia.com, is a, that one, I think it was written 100 years ago, is the one place where you can find a, a longer list. And they don't give you a little bit of the context, but you can find some more if you want that way. I think if you Google long enough, you can always find things. That's helpful. <laughs> Can I just ask, Lois, do you want to send me the email as well? Because we have email addresses of people that have booked a ticket for today, and we can equally, if they're interested, oh, yeah. we can send it to them, please. That would be amazing. Thank you. Sure, sure. sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hello. I hope I say something is not in the warm way because it's my English is not the good. It's the how is I explain. I always feel, yeah, you say with how blessing the God and God is blessing us. I find sometimes my life is like game over. Not on the sad way. I know God with me. And you do mention before, blessing is who is is the true just. Is it who is the two uh, judge? I how do I who? turn this? Um, feel everything is like end of the world to bless from God. The way, how do I say it? Can you teach me? Okay, well, in Hebrew, I believe it's Baruch Dayan Amet. <laughs> Blessed is the true judge. Um, uh, you're asking, how do you bless God for the injustices in the world? Good question. Obviously, he sends us, you know, Christ came to pay for the sins of the world and he raised us up as disciples for us to go out and help change the world and fix the bad things in the world and ultimately we're the helpers <laughs> that hopefully um, are part of his uh, kingdom that will, his loving reign that will fix many of the bad things that happen. So you can kind of say that we are part of God's answer, his his vindication, his justice, his trying his his ultimate way of bringing righteousness to a difficult and harsh world in many ways. Okay. Come on through Robin. Thanks very much, Lois. Um, I'm just wondering, there's, there are principles behind what you've said uh, about mm -hmm. from the moment you get up in the morning to the moment you go to bed, actually finding opportunities to, to bless God. Mm -hmm. The thing that might trap me if I'm not careful is that I don't think I will use the right words because some of those blessings that come out of the Psalms and so on are just beautiful and I wouldn't have thought of them mm -hmm. on my own. Um, yeah. so I think what mm -hmm. I might be trying to hold on to is the principle <laughs> of, of yeah, that's right. consciously trying to find opportunities to bless God and use whatever words you know I, I choose. <laughs> and then the other the other thing which you didn't mention was I understand there is actually a Jewish blessing for going to the toilet. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Uh, it was a, a little bit post Jesus's time. It's like 400 years later that it probably. But yes, there is a blessing, and uh, in Israel, one place I stayed, there was it was you could see it's for written for kids because kids are the only one who don't know it because you use it every time after you go to the bathroom, 
and it is that you have many openings and um, organs, and you have, and so you thank God for your health and that all of the openings that are supposed to open opened and all of the ones who were supposed to stay closed were closed <laughs> it's very kind of humorous almost but uh it, he that he, he made us in all of his wisdom right Lois, um, um, you know when my yes. dad was really poorly before he died um <laughs> he wouldn't mind me telling the telling you all this that was one of his big problems you go into the mm-hmm. room. Mm-hmm. It made me realize yep. suddenly what a blessing it was when everything worked. Okay. So yes. <laughs> I was grateful for There's that. A... And I'm grateful to yep. you for this afternoon. I'm, I'm just de- devoted to turning that way. You can't stop yourself. Um, thank you so much for everything you said. <laughs> yes, there's a principle. And, you know, we're, I know we're all going to try and use it, aren't we? We're all going to try and use yep. it. And we may yeah. be not professionals at it, but we'll get there. The Lord yeah, it's just a... So thank you, Lois, and thank you for the wonderful books you've written. We are so grateful to you. We really are. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I often, well, as I told you that I uh, really wanted to be yeah, with for, you. I mean, Fiddle on the Roof is one of my favorite films. And okay. I, I just love Tevye and a like, you know, sense of humor and how God has a sense of humor. And I've always been really confused how people can bless God. I have actually had that recent confusion, so I'm really pleased to hear that we can bless God. Because I just mm-hmm. thought, actually, doesn't God bless us? But mm-hmm. just one little point of confusion I have is, you know, we, we finish an email, blessings. We bless mm-hmm. the people. It, mm-hmm. I, you know, I come from a Catholic tradition, and it's only the, the priest who can bless you. So mm. do you have anything to say about that, Louis? Can we bless people? Um, we can. Or are we really saying, Lord, can you bless this person on our behalf? Yeah. That's right. right. <laughs> you're, you're right. What you're, I would say that, uh, and I myself often write blessings, but I, when I think about it more, I would say that what I intend to be doing is praying a tiny prayer at the end is, Oh, Lord, please bless this friend of mine as I finish this letter of mine. You know, once again, my Ugandan friends, they often start their letters with praise the Lord. And they um, often, may he bless you. They spell it all out in much more beautiful ways. It's a delightful African tradition, or at least among my Ugandan friends. And so that actually has made me more aware is that when you say blessings, or, you know, you're right, is that we could easily spell out what we say at the end of an email so that people understand that it's not just a, not just rote, not just a etiquette, but that you genuinely have prayed for them at the end of your email. Well, there's a thought. I have to throw in one little thing is that, um, you know, we all, many people got tired of Zoom <laughs> and the pandemic kind of forced us all into doing Zoom and online things. But now, uh, like I had a, there's a Bible study in Jerusalem that used to be that I could only take part in it once every three years when I was visiting Jerusalem. And these folks were delightful scholars that had been understanding the stuff I'm trying to study. And once every three years, well, but they had to go on Zoom. And so now I take part in every week. And so honestly, when I turn on my Zoom, I bless the Lord for Zoom. (laughs) Thank you, Lord, for giving us technology and forcing us to use it. Despite the difficulties of the pandemic, thank you for using it to give us a technology we didn't have before. Thank you. I think um, on behalf of CMJ, I would like to reiterate that we, we are very thankful for Zoom because obviously without the connection, we wouldn't have met you, Lois. And, and I'm truly blessed by having you with us this afternoon. And I hope it's OK by everybody in the room. I've um, just asked Robin if he'll close in prayer uh, as we head to tea. Thank you, all those that are on live stream. Thank you for joining us today. Um, We've had many chuckles in the room here. I hope you've had chuckles at home. And Lois, I do look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, It would be great to meet you in person, I'm not going to lie. But it's just fantastic that you've been with us. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, we want to bless you, Lord, for uh, this woman who has talked to us today. We thank you for her scholarship. We thank you for the lovely way in which she delivers it to us. And we want to pray, Father, that it will make a difference to us every day, that we will be in a position where we will want to bless and thank you for everything, every good thing and every bad thing that comes in our direction. Everything in the end is coming from you, and we want to bless you now for Jesus. Amen. Just one last thing. I feel a bit reluctant to turn it off. <laughs> I think I might have to. You might have to turn it. Yeah, we're all going to turn around. Can you? Does anybody want to come and actually wave to Lois so she can see you? Come and stand up the front here because yeah, come up front. So she can see you. So if you want to actually let Lois see your face, come, come and stand at the front. You can give Lois a big wave. Come to the front. Everybody, come or actually, the camera. <laughs> Ursula, can you just point to the camera for me, please? Just, there you go. just hold it. Wave there and look towards Ursula, and then you can all. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. I give you an American. Howdy. <laughs> Delightful. I would have loved to have been there. So giving you a hug for here. This is a Zoom hug. It will last you till I come and visit you someday, okay? <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> Bye. 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 Nice to be with you folks. Delightful, delightful. Very nice. <laughs>